The Ford Mustang, one of the most iconic cars in automotive history. An American icon that serves as an inspiring example of survival, even through the darkest of times. From the very start, Mustang has offered countless options and configurations. A simple, front-engine, rear-drive, solid-axle layout that is both cost-effective and easy to service. The Mustang tradition of borrowing a modified economy car platform would begin with the first-generation's Falcon-sourced underpinnings. This strategy minimized production costs and kept sales prices competitive enough to lure record sales. From fastback sports car to stylish notchback to upscale convertibles ready to cruise the boulevards, Mustangs were a hit from day one. And of course, it wasn't long before the father of the Mustang, Lee Iacocca, had his friend Carol Shelby massaging the Mustang into something truly special. As the years went on, Mustang would evolve and grow ever powerful and larger. The dawn of the 70s would prove to be the beginning of the end for pure unbridled power. As power decreased, personal luxury was the theme. Wood tone applique and plusher upholstery attempted to fill the void. By 1973, the original Mustang was virtually unrecognizable, having grown considerably in both size and weight. Color and trim options were as diverse as ever to distract from the rapidly decreasing horsepower numbers resulting from new EPA regulations. Though mostly ignored or even reviled by Mustang purists, the 1974 Mustang II would in fact save the Mustang. As with its predecessor, Mustang II was initially derived from humble origins, though it actually ended up sharing very little with the infamous Pinto, save for its trim dimensions. Also as with the original Mustang, a diverse array of luxury and sporty appearance options kept sales surprisingly strong. In fact, sales were strong enough to convince Ford that Mustang should survive. Dark economic times and rapidly increasing oil prices would not kill the Mustang. Once again, the fundamental concept of a sporty car based on humble origins was the key to survival. So next time you see a Mustang 2 at the car show, cut it some slack. It truly paved the way for the Fox Body Mustang. Jack Telnack would take the reins for the Fox Body Mustang program in the mid-70s. His team produced clean, uncluttered designs that attempted to maximize available interior space for the drastically downsized Fox Body platform. Early concepts foreshadowed the basket handle Futura Fairmont and Zephyr variants and were equally boxy in appearance. This concept from 1975 is an interesting mix of both Fairmont and Mustang II. The designers would explore many interesting variations, including a station wagon reminiscent of the Pinto two-door wagon. Over time, the vision of the Fox Body Mustang would come into focus. And once again, an humble family car would evolve into a legend. You're about to see a whole new breed of Mustang. Presenting the all-new 79 Mustang from Ford. From the start, the more European-style engineering of the Fairmont were a hit with both the press and the public. Rack and pinion steering and trim dimensions were the foundation of a promising future. Though emissions regulations continued to muzzle the reborn pony, 
It was clear there was something special about this generation. The original pony car spirit of affordable fun was back. As before, the 1979 Mustang offered both notchback and hatchback variants. Advanced for the time electronics, brought from other Fox body variants, were on offer, such as this diagnostic display and digital quartz clock. A 2.3 liter four cylinder producing 86 horsepower was standard, while a turbocharged 131 horsepower power plant was optional, as was a 255 cubic inch V8 which actually produced slightly less power, but appealed to a more traditional pony car prospect. Both Ghia and Cobra options would return for 1979, continuing the Mustang tradition of offering both luxury and sporty configurations to suit individual tastes. As with the Fairmont, the press widely praised the 1979 Mustang for its surprisingly European-style handling and ride, and anyone familiar with the Fairmont would easily recognize Mustang's interior for 1979. Fortunately, exterior styling and details were more unique. The new Mustang was chosen as the official pace car for 1979, and over 10,000 Indy 500 special editions were produced to commemorate the event. For its sophomore year, the 1980 Mustang featured primarily new color and trim options. The United States Auto Club compared the new Mustang to European rivals such as the Porsche 924 and Datsun 280ZX, and found the results impressive enough to certify it as a true sports car. The turbo option continued, with its non-functional hood scoop which actually provided clearance for the air cleaner. In keeping with the tradition of the time, vinyl roofs and two-tone paint options were on offer. The Cobra appearance package continued with its blacked out trim and special graphics. The four-cylinder turbo remained standard with mandatory four-speed. From Ghia Luxury to special Recaro bucket seats, the customization remained limitless. And Mustang, once again, was on a path to returning to its former glory. Mustang continued into 1981 with evolutionary changes. The available T-top continued to provide a near-convertible-like atmosphere. Ads of the time continued to proclaim the virtues of Mustang's advanced rack and pinion steering and modified McPherson strut suspension. Ford labeled the notchback as the two-door and continued to market it as the sporty yet frugal alternative to the more muscle car persona of the three-door hatchback variant. This Ghia model with simulated convertible top and wire wheel covers may not appeal to today's tastes, but it is nice to see such a diverse array of options compared to today's offerings. Cobra also continued with revised colors and stripe patterns. Lurking in the diverse array of options is the dreaded TRX package which featured metric wheels and tires that are virtually impossible to find these days. Now three model years old, the Fox Body Mustang was hitting its stride and was truly a member of the Mustang Steel.
As with the legendary Mustangs of the past, this new Mustang instilled a sense of pride of ownership and gave the ordinary man or woman the confidence to pursue their heart's desires. Whether it was late nights at the cinemas or quiet countryside drives, the spirit of Mustang was clearly back and received significant updates for 1982. The GLX model replaced the Ghia trim level, but continued to offer near luxury car levels of amenities. The GL and L models served as the bread and butter offerings and continued to include many standard features that were optional on competitors. Cobra was replaced by the GT trim level, which now featured the legendary 302 cubic inch V8 option, prompting Ford to announce the boss is back, even if it only produced 157 horsepower at this time. Whichever trim level was chosen, visual differences were kept to a minimum so that all could enjoy the thrill of owning an American legend. This is how Ford tests the new Mustang GT. For acceleration response, precise handling and evasive maneuvers, and emergency braking control. Law enforcement agencies in six states have noted the capabilities of the five liter Mustang. So that car in your rearview mirror may look strangely familiar, because in a lot of places, the boss is back. But now, it's wearing a badge. Y'all buckle up now. More change was in store for the Mustang in 1983, most obvious of which was the new blue oval Ford badging on the nose and tail. Subtle restyling of the front fascia and new tail lamps featuring amber turn signals also appeared. The GL trim level continued as the mid-level model, while the L carried on as the entry-level offering. This brochure ad continued to refer to the GT as the boss, as well as one hot piece of American steel. The return of the convertible Mustang was huge news, as it was the first Mustang convertible in nine years. Most convertibles were equipped with the 3.0 liter V6 and GLX trim. GLX models now offered a truly luxurious and rarely chosen leather option, which was not available in convertible body styles. And as always, the available features and options list seemed nearly endless.
ironically familiar to today. 1984 was a time of uncertainty and apprehension, and the Mustang served as a comforting companion for many. Just as it had for the previous 20 years, Mustang would continue to soldier on, and it would always be there for us, even in times of great uncertainty. From adversity, Mustang would continue to evolve to survive. The new EEC4 computer and revised turbocharging would offer greater power and efficiency. Revised suspension and steering geometry would better serve the increased power and performance of the drivetrain. Improved seats and general ergonomics would allow Mustang to better accommodate its loyal fans. Mustang would improve in every way to weather the storm of the unknown. The GT was now offered in both V8 and Turbo GT configurations. The new LX model was offered in both 3-door and 2-door configuration, as the GL and GLX models were dropped. The L model continued to be the entry-level variant, but was also highly customizable and remained attractive. The big news for 1984 was the SVO, which was a radical departure from the traditional Mustang formula. Featuring an intercooled 175 horsepower Turbo 4, revised suspension geometry, and 16-inch wheels, the SVO was uniquely ahead of its time. It was a huge hit with the press and performance enthusiasts, but a tough sell to traditional pony car buyers with its increased price over V8 models. The world survived 1984 just fine, and 85 brought in even more refinements including a new front end with smoother styling. The L and Turbo GT models were discontinued, leaving the LX, GT, and SVO. The GT received revised cylinder heads and a Holley four-barrel carburetor, as well as a more aggressive camshaft for manual transmission models. A front disc and rear drum braking system continued for most models, though the SVO did feature special four-wheel discs. The 3.8-liter V6 remained standard on LX convertibles and optional on two- and three-door models. The interiors remained familiar and continued to share many components with other Fox body models, most of which were nearing retirement. The LX continued to be the sporty rental car of choice and shared the new Gorilla's fascia with the GT. The GT now featured the QuadraShock configuration as well as new articulating sport seats and other refinements. The SVO now featured flush composite headlamps thanks to revised federal regulations. Power was increased to 200 horsepower and 240 foot-pounds of torque. Very impressive numbers for the day. With big changes coming for 87, 1986 saw a few revisions, including modified rear end differentials, multi-point fuel injection for all models by the end of the year, and the addition of the newly federally mandated third brake light. Though it was now eight model years old, the Fox Body Mustang continued to remain competitive and was by now something you just assumed would be around forever. This is the new Ford Mustang GT. With its unmistakably new body surrounding an equally dramatic five liter port fuel injected engine, it's easy to pick out the Mustang GT from a crowd. Not that it's likely to be in one. This is the new Mustang GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? Mustang received a major facelift for 1987, particularly the GT with its aggressive ground effects and tail lamp treatments. The other models also went under the knife and received smoother front ends and overall styling. Sadly, the SVO was no more leaving only the LX and GT models. The rear quarter window louvers were replaced by a single large pane of glass for a cleaner appearance. The interiors finally dropped the ancient Fairmont source dash in favor of an all new, more ergonomic design. Console and door trim were also new. The overall look continued to progress to a more European aesthetic. The V6 option was no more, leaving the 2.3 liter 4 and the 5 liter V8 GT model which also featured new turbine-style wheels. I vividly remember the first time I saw the 87 GT, 
The look was familiar, yet somehow new and exciting. It was clear the Mustang had once again evolved to survive. ASC McLaren offered a mildly revised Mustang GT for 88, featuring special wheels, leather sport seats, and unique tail lamp and ground effect treatments. Looming on the horizon was something sinister. A front-wheel drive, foreign-sourced horror. And its name was Probe. The entire muscle car way of life was threatened. Could Mustang survive the foretold arrival of this front-wheel drive abomination? Probe was more economical, more modern, safer. It was practical. Probe would argue there is no longer a place for a pure, unbridled, rear-wheel drive pony car excitement. Probe would destroy the establishment and create a new world order from the pony car ruins. All that the humble Fairmont had given life to would cease to exist. The traditional pony car was nearing an end. Or maybe not.
There wasn't much change for Mustang in 1988, other than minor quality improvements and overall refinement. The LX model was now available with the 5-liter V8 option, offering a true sleeper, particularly when the 5.0 badges were removed, which was common practice. A popular color option for the GT, as featured on this model, was the medium shadow blue with titanium lower accents. The now truly legendary 5.0 high output V8 would prove very popular with the aftermarket tuners and it would serve as the heart of Mustang GT for several more years. Mustang would celebrate its 25th anniversary with little fanfare. The 87 revisions continued to keep Mustang competitive enough until the next generation eventually arrived. The LX 5.0 offered the performance of the GT with the more understated styling of the LX and continued to be a very popular option. The base LX continued to be an attractive and inexpensive alternative to more mundane transportation. ASC McLaren revised a few details of their offering for 89 and continued to remain a popular poster on the walls of Mustang enthusiasts the world over. Saline also offered special editions that featured disc brakes borrowed from the SVO as well as a BorgWarner 5-speed transmission and bespoke body accents. Mustang carried on into 1990 with few changes, but did now feature the safety of a driver's side airbag and a revised lower passenger instrument panel. Clear coat paint was also now standard, as were door mount pockets and a leather option returned as well. The 2.3 liter Ford received an increase in horsepower from 88 to 105 for 91. GT models received new 5-spoke alloy wheels. By now, the Fox Body Mustang had served an incredible 13 model years, a base price exceeding $10,000 for the first time and a lack of changes finally started taking a toll on sales. This American hero that had served for so long for so well was finally starting to show its age. But this was not yet the end of the story of the Fox Body Mustang. 
Ford would gift its faithful steed with a glorious send-off in the form of the 1993 Cobra Special Edition. Conceived by the newly formed SVT team, the Cobra featured a specially tuned 5 liter V8 producing 235 horsepower and 280 pounds of torque. For one last time, the original Fox Body Mustang would shine and remind everyone of the power of a simple concept. Take a tried and true design and breathe new life into it to create something truly special. The story of Mustang is a story of survival and hope. Through good times and bad, it adapted, it evolved, it survived.